Today let's talk about power distribution. Welcome back everybody, Joe with Forge Performance. Here with our eighth installment of our drag car video documentary series talking about power management and power distribution in the race car. Now when I set up on this project and I really wanted to convert it into a race car as if the bars surrounding my head here wasn't a good indication of that already. I wanted to simplify the car and make the wiring as simplified and lightweight as possible as well because obviously when you're adding all kinds of safety equipment you're trying to make up for that in weight savings in other places. I knew I could accomplish that if I removed the factory electronics out of the vehicle. But with these newer cars everything is so integrated into each other that it's very difficult to go about removing those modules and still have the car actually want to run. So I did a ton of research took me several weeks of just pouring through the factory service manuals, understanding how the car talks to the other modules, what each module needs to see in order for it to be happy. And that all started with really CAN communications. All of these cars are based on CAN, which is how these modules talk amongst themselves. They don't necessarily have sensors wired into each other that all read the same thing. So great example, the factory ABS computer has the wheel speed sensors go directly to the ABS computer, but then the transmission computer as well as the factory engine computer take those wheel speed sensors off of the CAN network to get the information they need to do certain tasks. So I had to pour through the different modules and see what could I delete and what do I have to keep. So I knew I had to keep the factory transmission computer or TCM because that is the one thing that there's no aftermarket support for currently in the GTR. Now you can reprogram the factory TCM to do just about anything you want, but in terms of you know taking that box out and removing it with aftermarket hardware, there's just not a solution for that as it stands today. But I was able to remove every other module in the car with the exception of the ABS, I, now you can remove the ABS if you want to go with manual brakes or further simplify the car, get a little more weight out of the car, but you're going to have to rewire certain things over to the MoTeC so it can rebroadcast the signals that the TCM and the ECU are looking for in terms of wheel speed and yaw sensors, basically accelerometers that are looking for, for the VDC functions, but the factory transmission computer and the ECU are also using those for traction control and various other functions. But what I was able to do is remove every other module in the car. So there is a factory body control module or BCM that controls functions like power windows, power locks, the security, uh, the keyless entry, all that stuff, that's, that's gone. Now there's also something called a IPDM which lives under the battery box area that controls all the different power distribution or high power consumption things like um, headlights, braking lights, um, the factory engine fans, you know, things that consume a lot of power, have high current demands, runs through that. There's other things like the steering lockout sensor, the Bluetooth modules in the car, the TPMS system. There's all kinds of other modules that after pouring through the service data, I was able to determine that the car doesn't absolutely need that to run. And I kind of had an epiphany when I realized that a MoTeC removes the factory ECU and the car still runs without it in there. So I started to think to myself, okay, what else do I have to bypass? Because if you've noticed, once the key is in the car and you start the car, you can walk away with the key and the car's still going to run and do everything. So if I could bypass the initial security, I knew I could get this thing to start up and run. So that's what I set off to do. And I'm going to give you guys just a little bit of a tour how we set up the car and talk a little bit more about the various functions of the keypad and the PDM. All right, what you guys see here is the race grade keypad 15, which controls through CAN the... MoTeC PDM30, which is what we chose to use in the car because we wanted to retain as much of the lighting controls and various other functions to make it street legal as possible. Now, 
I'm not kidding myself. This car is far from street legal, but I also wanted to challenge myself to know that I could wire these things into the PDM and make them function as standard. So just to give you guys a little bit of a tour here, to turn the car on, all I do is hit the ignition switch. And when that happens, there's some various functions that happen, just like in a normal startup sequence of the car, when we poured through the manuals, the car goes through several different startup procedures to allow you to start the car. So just like the factory car, you know, the start button down here no longer functions. That is up here on the keypad. And you press that, hold it, and you have to have your foot on the brake. The, the transmission has to be in neutral or park, just like normal for all the safety lockouts. All of that's programmed into the PDM. So when the car is running, I have all the various status lights, like the engine fan, oil fan, and some other updates here. I can manually key the fan on. You can hear that now. And I can program the various LED lights to do flashing at different cadences based off of what I'm doing. So when I turned the engine fan on there, you noticed it was flashing. That was indicating to me that I manually turned that on. If it's a solid green light when the engine's running, that means the, en the oil fan or the engine fan is on and functioning properly. Some of the other cool things, we have the lighting control here. One light, one press is the low beams. The second press functions the high beams, and I can toggle between those low beams, high beams. To turn it off, you just press and hold, and then the lights turn off. And that's all programmed into the PDM software. Same with turn signals. If I just do a light press, it'll flash the turn signal three times. If I do a long press, it presses it, it turns them on for 10 seconds, just like a normal turn signal. And you can see there that I have the LED functioning over on the dash to let me know as well. Some other cool things that we did is we automated some of the functions for the transmission and the ABS computer to put it into R and off. I have it programmed to automatically trigger those two after three seconds of runtime in the vehicle. So that's things you don't ever have to remember to do as you're pulling up to the line. One of the other interesting things that I want to show you before we go take a look at anything else is how we made the line lock function. And I got to give Joe Levy from Race Spec some credit here. It took a little bit of a doing because we had removed all of the driver switches and everything on the steering wheel. As you can see, there's nothing there. But what we were able to do is require the line lock to work only under certain conditions. So I have to put my foot hard on the brake and there's a brake pressure indicator on the dash. Let me uh, clear these out. And you can see here, I have to really push on the brake about as hard as I can. And when it's maxed out, now the line lock is flashing. And when I hit this button, I don't know if you heard the click on the video, but that means the line lock is engaged. And we can do our burnout. It also automatically put it into burnout mode. So I don't have to hit a bunch of buttons on this car to make it function the way we want. And then when I release the line lock, it releases the line lock and I can drive through the burnout. And then all I have to do is switch it in to the different map. You got map one or map two based off of what we're gonna do. There's also some various launch control functionality on this switch. And then we got something in store for you guys on this switch that will be coming in a different video. All that programming we just talked about is done in the PDM software from MoTeC. And we're taking just a brief look at that here to show you guys what that looks like. It's uh, pretty complex. If you have a basic understanding of if-then statements, it kind of works in that manner. And you build some logic out from there. You know, we're looking at all the various outputs here, and then you have uh, the various CAN inputs that I'm taking in from other systems, as well as the functions, which is really where the intelligence of the MoTeC PDM comes into play. I can tell this thing to do just about anything I want. For example, with the engine fan, when I open that up, 
basically tell it to turn the engine fan on if it sees the engine fan request come on from the keypad or if it sees it come from the MoTeC ECU over the CAN communications. And lastly here, the keypad. And this is how we go in and tell it what to do with the various LEDs and how to configure this. So as you can see, this is all customizable and I can tell it to do different things. And if I change a configuration on the car, let's say I remove the headlights and I wanna repurpose that output for something differently, I just go into here and can use the same wiring even and just repurpose what that output does and how the keypad handles that and then the logic behind it with the functions. All right, now that we've taken a look at the inside of the car and the keypad and how it functions, I'll take you around to the front of the car in the battery box area where if you're familiar with what a GTR is supposed to look like on there, ours looks quite a bit different. Here we are looking at the battery box area with all of the various components that we've installed. If you'll uh, notice, this looks nothing like the OEM battery box for a GTR. So starting with the battery itself, we designed a lightweight battery tray and a lithium-ion battery. This thing feels almost like it's a toy. It only weighs about four pounds, but it has supplied plenty of power to the car. We've actually had an alternator belt fly off and we're able to drive the car back to the shop it was about seven or eight miles away with all the lights on and everything, and we had enough juice to uh, run the car for that amount of time. I was fairly impressed with that. And in the front there is the battery cutoff switch from race grade. This thing's a little bit overkill, but what it d does is allows you to have a remote-mounted switch with a two-pole pull. So as soon as it pulls to one side or the other, it doesn't energize the circuit any longer so it only draws current from when it's pulling the switch from you know either engaged or disengaged and we had that custom built for the car and there's a switch on the back of the car that that kills that but uh, going around here you have the the battery power comes in here down to the bottom of the the switch that also is for the alternator because I need to be able to isolate the battery. If I don't complete the circuit, I don't want the alternator to still run the car. So when I flip the switch, it needs to kill the car. That's how this is set up. And then on the other side of the kill switch is the power that loops around into this stud. And then the various systems that need power to supply the stud, you know, the starter and the PDM. I was able to mount the PDM to the factory PDM assembly, but uh, we have quite a bit going on there with the fuel system that we'll talk about in another video. Also you can see in our previous video we talked about the fire suppression that loops around and comes into this area and sprays the fire retardant onto the fuel system as well as the battery. And we do realize this is a lithium ion battery and usually if lithium starts to go up it's just going to burn until it's over but we're hoping that the fire suppression will kill any fuel related fire in the, the battery box. And just real quick here, this is the uh, the back of the car where the remote kill switch is. Just flip that sucker down and it kills everything in the car. If we're safety workers, you know, if for some reason we crash or we're not able to disable the car from inside, somebody can run up behind the car and kill the car that way. I know power wires, power management, power distribution, all that isn't the sexiest thing in the world to talk about when talking about a drag car, but we're pretty proud of what we were able to accomplish here. Very few cars have gone to this extent to be able to simplify the car. No more fuses, no more relays, all solid state electronics. You can program the thing to do whatever you want, and if you don't like it, you can change it later. It's pretty cool stuff, and I'm proud to say that Two of the fastest GTRs in the world, even the current world record holder, has our MoTeC body harness in it with a PDM. Now, Rob has done some of his own custom programming there, but he had noticed what we had done and had us build him a couple harnesses for his cars as well. You know, and the weight savings is apparent. Just in wiring alone, I was able to remove 36 pounds of just dead weight wire in the car, not to mention all the various modules 
and boxes and sensors that I no longer needed in the car. It was well over a hundred pound weight savings. If you look at what a traditional person who's lightening the car, they might remove the radio and some other simple things, but they're having to remove or uh, keep all of the various systems in place to keep the car happy and allow it to run. We were able to get rid of all that and saved quite a bit of weight in doing so to make up for some of the weight we've added into the car with safety gear. So with that, hope you guys enjoyed, and we'll see you on the next video.